to make this more game-like, we want to keep track of the wins and losses that the player has encountered. So with that, I'm going to have an integer. This integer will be my wins. And I will have an integer for my losses. So I will want to then display these on screen. Now, it kind of makes sense that I need to give those a starting value and we can put that inside of our setup right now. So I'll say wins is zero, losses is zero. So now that we have those, if I look, here's my game state. Now, if I want to display that information, I want to display it on my start screen, I want to display it on my win screen, and I want to display it on my losing screen. So I could take the same chunk of code for displaying that information and put it into each one of those game state functions. Or I could just make a new function that I will be able to call that will then and I'll call it, you know, show, I'll just call it show score because my score is really my total number of wins and losses. So I'm going to make a function that can do that and then I will call that function. So let's go down after my game states here. We have reset game. We may be looking at that in a little bit. But now I want to create a function and this will be show score. Or, yeah, I guess show score. So inside of show score, this is where I'm going to set the text for wins and losses. So to start this out, In the process of doing this, I may have to go and modify one other, something else inside my, let's see, lose game, win game, and start all have text align center. But I don't want my score to align center. I want to text align left. So I'm going to draw my this just in the top left corner of my screen. Now, after I've set my text alignment, I'll set my text size. In this case, I'll just set it to 14. Give old tired eyes the ability to read the text that's there. I'll set a fill color. In this case, I'll just use black. You can choose whatever color you want. And now we need to put some text on screen. So the text that I want to put on screen for my wins and losses, I will use text say wins colon space clo close out now this is where we're probably going to have to create a text string because I'm going to want to do something like this wins plus so because I want to show wins and losses and maybe put wins and losses on two separate lines and as we start doing these composite strings where I'm doing text plus a variable, this is where it makes more sense to set it up as a string and then my text is going to just simply be S and then I will set it at a location and we'll put it 20 in from the left and 50 down from the top. So now let's define out what the string is going to be, and it will be my wins plus, now I'll put a line return in, and I could do a line return like that, so we show it as separate plus, now in quotes, losses. And after the colon, do a space because that will then put the number after it with a little bit of gap.
So we have winds, the net, my variable, a line return. Now technically these two don't have to be separate. So I could combine this together like this and that would work. But if it's easier for you to read it where you know that this is now putting that line return in, you can do it this way. So I've created this method or function to show the score. And in doing that, now inside each of my game states where I want to display what my current score is, the, all I have to do is call this function. So that's going to clean things up a little bit. And what you will find is as you start building your programs, as they become more and more complex, that they're starting to do more within each kind of game state, you will want to separate logical pieces into their own methods. And in doing so, then each function just calls a bunch of other functions and that makes it much cleaner. Now, if I look at what I have here under drawing my button and calling this game state, all of this code here I repeated the identical code in my two things. So if I've put the same code in my program twice, that means I probably need to find a way to put it into its own function and just call that function. That would be a better way of programming. So we will clean up our code here in a little bit and do that because that will actually make our whole program just a little bit easier to read. So now if we go back under start game here, I can put it at the beginning, I can put it at the end, it doesn't really matter. If I were drawing graphics on screen, so I drew a big picture and I wanted this text on top, then I would have to make sure I put it after that. So I am going to put the score because I want the score to show up and all of these, I'll just put it at the end of each of these functions. So I'll just say show score. Like this. Now if I just do it on this first screen and we run it, well see there's the score, left hand corner wins and losses. Now I did not call that method yet inside my other functions. So under win and lose, if we go down to the end of those, show score, put that in my win, put that in my lose, now if we run it again, and it's working for win and lose except for the fact that my score is not changing. It's not keeping track whether I have won or lost, but at least now we know that text is showing up on screen. The next part is to figure out how to change those values and that should be happening inside of play game because when I achieve my winning state, so we can just take wins and tell it to go up by one. We can take losses and tell it to go up by one. Now if we do that and run the program again, Start out wins and losses are zeros. And now we can see I won. I've won twice. I've won three times. Oh, I've lost once, twice, three times. Now wins and losses are, okay, now I'm the biggest loser. I've lost four times. So we're able to control the state of our game. We have wins and we have losses occurring within this. Final cleanup is this whole draw button. It's going to make way more sense to put that into its own function. So right after show score here, I'm going to add in a new method and I'll just call this draw replay button. Turn twice, close out my curly. Now the next thing is to go grab all of that button code. I'm going to 
cut that out of there, paste it in. And then replace that with draw replay button. And now we can do the same thing here and say draw replay button. And now when I look at win and lose, they're much more manageable because they don't have an additional 30 lines of junk in them. So win draws my main text on screen, and then it draws the replay button, shows me the score. Lose, same thing. And then we can see those two methods as they're defined down here. So when you have something doing the same thing twice, it makes sense to put it into its own method. To that end, if you wanted to, you could even build out a complex function for drawing all of this text on screen because they're essentially the same between win and lose. And all you would need to do is to pass into that method the text that you want to show up on screen. So you could create a method that has all of this and we pass into it as a parameter the text we want that method to display but then it now knows how to put it on screen and that would make our program even cleaner and easier to read.